Hi, I'm Devin Varner with Varner Equipment in Delta, Colorado. I wanted to talk today about drive lines. Um, this becomes a very good point of contact that we use here. We have a lot of people that have a lot of questions on this. We run into a lot of different problems with drive lines. And I wanted to address some of the different issues that we see with them so you kind of understand what we're dealing with from a part side and what we can help you with down the road whenever you get into having to fix one of these yourself. So um, the first thing I wanted to get into today, and we will add this, this is gonna come later in this video, um, we're gonna cut one of these drive lines. This is a very common problem. We see this all the time. A lot of the new drive lines on a new piece of machinery come just like this one here, all shielded, all put together, ready for you to use it with the exception of it's a universal drive line. That universal drive line is meant to be able to hook to whatever tractor can hook to that piece of equipment and work for length. It will be long enough. It might not be short enough. So all of these are meant to be cut. Um, and we're gonna show you how to do that later on in this video, how to cut this down, how to size it to your tractor and how to get it to fit. Uh, because that seems to be a point to where a lot of people struggle, like, well, how do I do that? What am I supposed to do? And we'll show you how to do that so you can figure out how to do that yourself. Whether you're buying a piece of machinery from us or you're buying it from somewhere else and you got a question on how do I make this thing fit on there, we'll go through exactly how to cut one of these new drive lines down and how to get it to fit on there. One of the first things that we, we got to know from a parts standpoint, if you come into my parts department and say, I need a drive line for this piece of machinery, if we know what piece of machinery it is and there's still parts available for it, we can probably order you a complete drive line that fits right on it, replaces the old one and goes. For instance, post hole diggers. Post hole diggers, there's a generic drive line for almost all post hole diggers that are out there with the exception of some of the older Dan user stuff. Um, and I'm sure there's some other ones out there, but I know Dan user for sure. Some of the older Dan user stuff runs about a 15 spline input shaft on an older F8 series Dan user um, post hole digger and they take a very specific drive line or an adapter kit to switch one of the new ones on there. But if you buy a Speedco, Shaver, Rhino, anything that's got that one inch input shaft into the gearbox, it's a very simple one to get. We can get you a complete drive line with plastics, yokes on both ends that fits your shear bolts. All you have to do is slide it on, put the pins in, and you got a brand new drive line on it. And most of the time, way cheaper than what you can build this drive line for. So if you, one of the biggest things that we see is they get sit for a long time and you can no longer slide them apart. Um, well, you would have to buy a couple pieces of driveline stock like this, replace an inner and an outer. This stuff is not cheap. And the stock itself will cost you darn near the same, if not more than buying a complete new driveline for a postal digger. So keep that in mind whenever you get into some of these attachments, especially for a tractor of this size or a little smaller, those attachments are usually a fairly inexpensive drive line to buy and sometimes by the time you work on them very or very much you're going to go ahead and put the money in them that it would cost to go ahead and just buy a brand new one and be done with it but uh so going back to what i was originally saying you got to figure out what you have one of the ones you see quite often is a square or rectangle profile there is such thing as a true square profile. There's stuff that's three quarter by three quarter, one inch by one inch. You don't see it anymore at all. It's very old. Um, this will be stuff back, very old, back in the 50s and 60s. You'll see some of that square profiled stuff, manure spreaders, sickle bar mowers. There's some of it running around. If you come to us with something like that and you need to get a piece of stock, it's getting really, really, really hard to find. Everything that you see anymore is rectangular profiled one inch by inch and an eighth, three quarter by one inch, something along those lines to keep them from wanting to waller out a square profiled tube that slides over the top of it. So that's why they're that rectangular shape to keep them from wanting to turn inside the tube. That style, this square styled stuff is domestic made stuff. This is North American product and it is going to be that square profile. You will only see that made on domestic stuff. That is not in any of the other three that you run around. And so the next ones that you see is Bondioli, Comer, and Walterscheid. Bondioli runs this bell shape. This is a Bondioli driveline, very common, covers a lot of drivelines is Bondioli. This one here will have, the biggest majority of stuff you will see is this particular driveline. It's got a flat piece on top. 
and two rounded bells. We, you can, a lot of people call it a bell-shaped drive line. Um, this is a very, very, very common on almost everything that you're seeing now as far as a small implement would go. Comer um, and Walter Scheid, uh, uh, let me back up. Comer has one that's kind of like this profile, but it's, um, it's not built the same as this Walter Scheid one is, but it's kind of a star-shaped drive line. And then Walter Scheid has this little teardrop style one as well. You see this quite a bit in low horsepower stuff. You're seeing it in some of the bigger stuff, not near as popular as the Bondioli stuff is. The kicker you run into with this is somebody will call and tell us, well, I got one of the bell-shaped drive lines. I need a piece for it. I don't know what the exact number is, but I'm gonna guess 15, maybe a few more different sizes of this particular size of stock. You can run into this to where this piece might be an inner that slides on the inside. This also might be the exact same size and be an outer for the other size of drive line that's out there. It could be either or, an inner or an outer depending on which one you run into. So you can run into an inner shaft that has a cross-sectional profile of just a few millimeters or even tenths of millimeters, 3.2 or whatever they have on there, and the outer diameter one might literally be the exact same OD, but might be thinner here. So as far as finding a used one, or even for us to put new driveline stock on it, we've got to know what you've got. We carry a lot of this in stock. We got a lot of it sitting here. We can put it on there, but there's just a massive amount of difference when you start going into this style of driveline. Same thing with these. There's multiple, multiple different sizes of that, and we've got to know what size you have. One of the deals I did not mention with the domestic style ones, the domestic style drive lines on a male part of the shaft is usually always a solid bar stock piece for the male side. The female side used to be, and up to a 14 style domestic drive line, you can still get what just looks like a piece of square tubing that slides over the top of it. Once you get past a 14 style drive line, they no longer have in a new aspect anyway, they no longer have that square tubing that slides over it. They now have these, which are, we call them a slip sleeve, but it's just a short six inch, very heavy sleeve that has that square profile in it that actually gets welded into a piece of round tubing and makes the drive line. The kicker with this is going to be when you cut a Bondioli drive line, this Bondioli drive line is profiled end to end the exact same way. All we got to do is cut a little bit off the ends, slide it together and away you go. With the domestic drive line, this square portion is literally only right here. So if we got to cut six inches out of the drive line and you cut it off, it's just round from here on down. It does not have that profile in it. So that's what we're going to show you on this particular one today. Whenever we get in there that you literally have to cut this weld off, preferably with a lathe, cut this off there. You're going to cut the, how much you need to cut out of the tubing with the lathe. Then you're going to put the sleeve back inside it and weld that back in to shorten a domestic style drive line. I grabbed this one while I was out there running around. This profile is also a domestic style drive line that shows that multiple spline drive line. This is also something you see on domestic stuff. Um, very, usually high horsepower. That's all big, high horsepower. Big balers, corn choppers, stuff that takes a little bit of horsepower to them that run that spline shaft to them. But that's what we would need to know whenever you're calling us. We need to know what do you have? What style of driveline you have? And then the biggest thing that we use to differentiate between size and different, different kind of driveline is actually your U-joint caps. Your U-joint caps, actual outside diameter and width across the cap, tells us exactly what it is from make, whether it's domestic, Bondioli, Comer, Walter Scheid, and also what size it is. For instance, in a domestic one, uh, if it's a, this one here is a, a size 14, there's sixes, tens, twelves, fourteens, thirty-fives, forty-fours, fifty-fives, several different sizes in here that this tells us all the difference between them. You'll also see, and the reason I grabbed two of these, You'll see some of these that have internal snap rings where there's a snap ring groove on the U-joint. And then there's also ones that have external snap rings where the snap ring groove is in the yoke instead of in the U-joint. Both styles will also help us differentiate what you have as far as who builds the driveline and what we need to do with it. 
This little piece here, I brought this over here. This actually gets paired with one of these slip sleeves. You can see this is machined down on the end. This is not the slip sleeve for that particular U-joint or cross, but you use a tube then that goes in between them and that's what welds those two together to build one of these. That's what this is. It's a piece that looks like this and then another piece on there on the end and your tubing slides right over the top of them and then you weld those together to make them. Don't forget if you're going to be cutting one of these, this is clocked. So this is clocked with your U-joint in the back or your yoke is clocked to keep that into time over here. Uh, some guys will argue that it's not in time, it's not balanced driveline anyway, it doesn't have to be clocked. They do come clocked if you buy them. If you buy this piece already built, it's clocked. And so I would kind of recommend go ahead and clocking it the same way. So that'll give you kind of a real crash course on the different types of driveline stock that we have, the different stocks that are out there, the different pieces that you need to have in order to buy one, the different things that we need to know in order to measure one for you, and also, just in all, all in general, the different things that you can get as far as pricing on it. And like I was saying before, if you are going to fix a drive line that has this type of material in it, really consider buying the whole entire drive line because by the time you get done buying a yoke, putting it on here, getting a U-joint, putting the U-joint in, and then going and putting it on, there's lots of times you can buy this complete new, brand new drive line, actually less money than fixing the old ones. But if you want to fix them, we have that product here as well to help you get through with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna walk through with you on cutting one of these. Um, this particular drive line, we sold to a customer and a uh, customer had a domestic drive line, square rectangular profile drive line, and he needed the female shaft for it. His old one was one of the square tubing shafts that just slid over the top of the male shaft, but the new ones when you order them come just like this. Um, I can't remember the exact measurement right off the top of my head, but I believe he needed his to be somewhere around 21 inches total length for the drive line. And the shortest you can buy these now is 24. So regardless of what we did, we have to take a minimum of two, three, four inches out of this drive line to make this work for this customer. So what we are going to do for him, we're gonna put this in a lathe. We're gonna cut this weld off all the way around on this slip sleeve and actually separate these right here put this back in a lathe, and we're gonna cut out whatever dimension we need cut out of this, slide this back together, and then we're gonna weld this joint back together to give him the exact length that he needs. So the first step you would need to do on this particular drive line is make you some type of a mark on this to go ahead and clock it. Um, what I'm going to do, and you'll see here in a little bit, I'm gonna just lay a piece of flat iron right across the top from this greaser and square it up in here, and I'm just gonna draw a line right down the middle of it so that way whenever we cut it, we can still line our lines right back up and we'll be clocked to wherever, we're, wherever it needs to be to get going. All right, so I went ahead and I drew a line, like you can see kind of right down the middle of this drive line, uh, so that we'll have a reference point whenever we go to put this back together. This is just a little old lathe. I've had this a long time. Um, it does the job, it's nothing special, but it does exactly what we need it to do. I did put a steady rest in it. Um, I took a dial indicator and set on the tube, make sure we're turning nice and true, because we want this to be straight so that we don't get any wobble in our drive line. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this off and then I'll bring you back once I get this piece cut off and then we'll show you uh, what it's gonna look like cut apart. Then we'll go ahead and cut off our piece and then we'll show you what that looks like to go ahead and do that. So we'll be back in just a bit. So we got this uh, cut apart to where now we've got us a drive line and that little adapter. So we cut this off now, then we're gonna go and we're gonna size this, which I believe he needs about three and three eighths inches cut off. We're gonna go ahead and cut this off real quick. Then we're gonna slide these two back together, made them back together, and we're gonna weld this right in the lathe. We're gonna square it up so it's nice and true, and then we'll tack it, and then we'll go ahead and weld it right up in here. But um, I'm gonna get set up to cut this off, and then we'll go ahead and cut it. We got that all out of there, and what our customer was looking for was an overall total length of 23 inches. 
Um, so it ended up being to where this one is parted off. It's a four inch collar. So we needed 19 inches overall length on this. So I, I set it back up and got it all dialed in and we got 19 inches here to part it off and we'll go ahead and cut her off here and So that'll give us our 19 inches right out here to the end. And then now I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit and then we're gonna end up inserting this in here and then I'll get the welder over here and we'll get this set up in order to go ahead and weld her back on. So we put a line on this last time when we made a straight line. There's our line again. This is a real nice tight fit back into here and usually you can just take these and just kind of. So with that, all we're going to do with that is we're going to go get us a little wooden block, something that whenever we hit that end on it is softer than the ground so we're not hitting that end and mushrooming that end, damaging the end up. And we're literally just going to drive it right up inside there. I did already clean up the inside of that pipe, inside of that tube, and so we're just going to get it started and then smack it on that wooden block and get it to drive it all the way back up into there until she's tight. So that puts us back on. We got a nice gap to weld into. That clocks our flat spot back to where it was. There's our line back together where it was in there. And now, with that done, that'll get us set right back in here at 23 inches, right on the button. So that'll be right where he needs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this back in and get it set up so we can weld this seam back together on this one and then this one will be done. So we've got it all set back up in here and we've got it all nice and straight. Um, I'm gonna give it about four tack welds right here and then I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna take it over to a welding table and put it in some V-blocks and then we'll finish welding it up. But for right now, we're just gonna give it a few little tacks here and get it so it'll hold itself. So that'll give us, this will be tacked together good enough uh, to get it over there. Now we can put it in some V blocks and we're gonna go ahead and weld that up and that should finish this little job up. So we got it set up over here just on some V blocks. We're gonna go ahead and weld that all up. So that's the full deal on that. Um, it's all welded back together now. We're straight. Uh, it's now for this customer. He like I said he needed 23 inches. So that cuts it out and that puts that in. So if you have to do it to repair on a domestic drive line like that, that's what you're into to do one of these round style drive lines. It's got the square um, input on the inside of them. So Devin Varner from Varner Equipment in Delta, Colorado. You can call us 970-874-0612. Uh, or our website is varnerequipment.com.